Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Finkel. Today we're going to go over how here at the Stanford Hospital we do our popliteal nerve blocks. Um, whether you're doing a one-shot block or whether you're doing a continuous block with a catheter, much of the preparation is the same. One of the most important things is to maximize patient positioning. For doing a popliteal block, I have the patient in right lateral decubitus position so that I can do the block on the left leg very important when doing this block to make sure that you understand the medial and lateral sides of the leg and that you don't make the mistake of thinking that this dot corresponds to the dot on the probe that you can see here. In fact, the orientation is reversed. What I'm going to do first is just place the probe right in the popliteal fossa. And the first structures that I'm interested in finding uh, frankly, are the vessels that traverse this space. And as you look here on the screen, you can see here what look like the vessels in the popliteal fossa. You also can confirm that by hitting color on your probe, and we've now confirmed that we have flow through these structures. So we've now identified the artery and vein. Having done that, we're going to look for our nerve sitting just adjacent to those structures. Watch as I move the probe gently, what an enormous difference you get in the picture. The most subtle movements can cause your picture to be maximized, where you can see your nerve now, right here. Or you can lose your image altogether if I gently keep sliding immediately, I've lost my nerve altogether now. I'm going to re-slide the probe laterally to reacquire the image that I'm interested in. And we found our nerve sitting right here, adjacent to the vessels. At this point, we know that the sciatic nerve is already split into the tibial and peroneal components. So what I'm going to try to do is gently move the probe, cephalad, to see if we can find where these two segments join to form the sciatic nerve which they've just done now. That's not the best picture, so I'm going to try to show it to you better. Here, again, I believe is your nerve, and I'm going to trace back to the fossa and watch them separate here. Here's the two components. One, two, moving cephalad, they join together. Moving caudad, they're separating right now. When I do this block, I want to make sure that I'm not doing it at this level. When you block here, it's very possible to have a positive twitch if you use a twitch monitor and to have a lousy outcome because you're blocking only either in the lateral aspect, the peroneal component, or the medial aspect, the tibial component there. So I want to move the probe, cephalad, to ensure that I have the whole sciatic nerve, which I do now. I'm happy blocking anywhere at this level or even a little bit higher to ensure that I get the nerve. Now look what happens as I gently move my probe, I've lost the view of the nerve altogether. Moving the probe slightly backward toward me, I've now reacquired it here. Subtle movements make enormous differences when doing blocks. So we're often asked about needle placement and where we do injection on skin. Uh, the first thing I've done is just kind of reacquired my image and what I'm interested in is to see how deep the nerve is relative to the skin and probe. So you see the nerve there and we see that the setting on this uh, machine is currently 3.3 centimeter um, and the nerve is sitting at almost mid-screen which means you're going to be at about 1.75 centimeter maybe uh, uh, some, uh, roughly that. So what I'm going to do is keep my probe exactly where it is. I have a nice view with the nerve sitting right in mid-screen. And I'm going to take the needle when I do uh, a block. I'm going to line it up perfectly with the probe. And I'm going to go down what I guesstimate to be 1.75 centimeter. Um, and from there, you'll see on screen uh, on the next block that we do make slight adjustments as we're heading toward the nerve. It's very important, as best you can, to try to keep the needle lined up to the probe, or you're going to either lose the needle view, or 
you're going to lose part of the needle view and think what you're seeing is the end of the needle when in reality the end of the needle is distal to what you're seeing on the screen. So try to keep the needle in line and also only move one thing at a time. If you start moving your ultrasound probe and start moving the needle at the same time, very slight movements can lead to you uh, having a very difficult time on screen. So really maximize your view first. Let's maximize our view. There. Line your needle up with the probe at roughly the depth that you expect the nerve to be and make adjustments as needed from there. Okay, so what you see here is an example of another block done this time on a right leg. You can clearly see the sciatic nerve as I play around with the probe and you see the vessels underneath there. I'm just rocking the probe back and forth just like in the last example to maximize my view of the nerve. And I take a little time doing that to see uh, the nerve as best I can and to see where it splits into the two divisions. I think we're going to see a good example here of the nerve joining to form the sciatic and now as I go back uh, caudad separating right now separating and as I head cephalad joining. So once I've acquired the view that I want I'm going to be placing the needle just as I showed you in the last example. You're going to see the needle coming from the left side of the screen moving toward the nerve. And as best I can I'm going to show it to you in view. Where my target is is actually to get just underneath the nerve as you see it there now. That's the ideal place that I like to start my injection from. And you see me making adjustments as I head to the nerve so that the needle can sit right underneath the nerve where I have it placed right now. Okay, once we're underneath the nerve, um, I'm going to make sure um, that obviously I don't have any paresthesia as I begin the injection. You can see the local anesthetic filling now underneath the nerve as we do our injection. I like to see nice pooling around and the nerve slightly rising underneath it. Once I'm satisfied that I have a nice amount of injectate there, I'm going to slowly redirect the needle to try to get on top of the nerve to ensure that I have good filling and circumferential spread around it. So you'll almost seem like we have a whole circle of local anesthetic surrounding a nerve that sits in the middle. In all, in this example, in most blocks that we do, we use about 30 milliliter of local anesthetic to do this block.